Today is January 9th, 2016. Joining us on the porch are Kay Miracle and Julie Schofield. Hey kids, it's Matthew, your host for another exciting episode of On the Porch Radio Hour. Ah, it's nice to be home. I've been gone on vacation for a while. I just got back from the West Coast where I was uh, just kind of strolling through the city. I I'm going to leave the city unnamed because the officials, the authorities there have asked me not to speak of any incidents that might or might not incriminate or not incriminate any of their officials or non-officials or any governing or non-governing bodies that might be in that city or any other surrounding cities that may or may not be in the same area of the undisclosed location. So there I was, just strolling through the market. And as I went into a building just off of the side of the market, there was a young man standing there with a mop. I should have known that the mop meant that there was probably something wet on the floor, but I didn't pay attention. And before I knew it, there I was running like Scooby-Doo and Shaggy in the cartoons where I was going very, very fast but not going anywhere at all. And I ended up on my back. And uh, I saw many stars. And two of those stars were actually Kay Miracle and uh, Jolie Schofield. And so I, was this, I, was lay I wasn't standing there. I was laying there, and I was looking up trying to gather myself and they helped me up one on each arm and we walked out of the market like that until finally one of them turned to me and said were you in there for any specific reason and all I could say was the mop so Kay left me with her guitar and she walked back into the market and then came back out with the young man's mop she said have you ever carried a guitar before? I said, yes, I, I own a, a guitar. And she said, great, run. And we all, we all took off. And uh, the, the next thing I knew, I was, I was standing on a street corner while Kay played her guitar, and I pretended to mop the sidewalk. And Julie walked down to the other corner and sang. And we did this neat little music number where I did like this Fred Astaire thing with the mop and I danced around the sidewalk and Kay played the guitar. And so we kind of owned the whole block for a little while. So then we, we decided to get coffee. And as we were hanging out having coffee, we officially introduced ourselves finally. And, and we got to talking about life and all of the places that they have been and all of the places I haven't. And we decided that maybe they should travel back to my hometown of Palermo and join me on the porch there was a little bit of of uh of difficulty as we got on to an airplane and there was a, a woman who was very distraught because she was in the middle of a divorce and she didn't want the seat that they put her in and i ended up having to sit up behind uh the pilots actually in the cockpit you know like a I don't know, like a little kid. Back when I was a kid, you could ride in the middle of the seat or sit in the back on what we love to call the hump, right? Because there was two spots where you could sit and put your feet in the little divots on the floor, and then there was the hump in the middle. And I never knew why that was there until I sat on it and realized that it was an excellent stool, and you could just kind of like put your elbows up on the little thing in between your parents' seats. And uh, if you talk too much, uh, a, a very nicely placed elbow would would get you to quiet down. And that's why they left the gap in between the two seats in the front. But there I was in the cockpit of this airplane feeling very distraught because it was neat to see them doing their things. But I kept thinking that every time I open my mouth, I'm going to get that nicely placed elbow. And so it was a little stressful for me. But when we ended up back in Syracuse, everything was fine, and we got picked up, and and here we are. And we'll get to hear more of their stories, and hopefully uh, they'll be able to give you more information than I have currently. But until then, Kay, you're on the porch. <laughs> Thank you.
All day long you sit on the fence and wait Heart and mind fight it out in the great debate Wanna make a move but still you hesitate Might as well give up and throw it to the hands of fate Ball is where the undecided go The future floats in the magic window Shake it up, it's got an answer to all Stop contemplating and ask that old eight ball Be it love or hate, I can mix them up easily Good or bad, what does karma have in store for me? change my mind constantly my life's a mess but the eight ball sees clearly eight ball is where the undecided go the future floats in the magic window shake it up it's got an answer to all stop contemplating and ask that old eight ball That old eight ball Yeah, 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 yeah Heads or tails, whichever way it may fall Yes or no, give the psychic hotline a call. Win or lose, it's all in the cards you draw. You can't decide, you better ask that old eight ball. Eight ball is where the undecided go. The future floats in the magic window. Shake it up, it's got an answer to all. Stop contemplating as the eight ball. Eight ball is where the undecided go. The future floats in the magic window. Shake it up, it's got an answer to all. Stop contemplating and ask that old eight ball. That old eight ball. Yeah, 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 yeah. Shake it up, it's got an answer to all That old eight ball That old eight ball It was 2010 when Julie Schofield moved to central New York and started taking courses at, at SUNY Oswego, which started a whole really cool adventure. Is that right? Absolutely. Awesome. Thanks for being on the porch. Welcome. Thank you for having me, Matthew. Yeah, absolutely. So in 2010, you, well, you didn't meet Damien, right? You had met like years before that. And then he got a job working at SUNY Oswego. That's and then right. you came along with him because he was a cool guy to hang out with. Every day. Yeah. Yeah. Since then. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Until then. Uh, or, or, okay, so then you moved, and I'm, I'm giving your whole history, but then you, you started taking courses, mm -hmm. and you then went to India with yes. a history professor? Yes. All right, so tell us about that, because I, I think that's, gonna, that's a pretty fascinating story. So my professor, who's now retired, Geraldine Forbes, uh, she has been studying women in Bengal and in India for about 30 years. She wrote books about it. She takes a group of students we're used to every year. And the group that I went with, we focused on uh, a sad topic, but an important one. We were looking at um, human trafficking. Mm -hmm. And she taught a, taught a course about the history of human trafficking. Mm -hmm. And while we were there, we met with students and professors, and we went to NGOs and met some of these women and got to see the work that they're doing. And it was um, 
it, it was an impact on me more than I thought it would be. I came home very driven to do something yeah. and to go back. So Awesome. And so you did end up going back. Is that right? Mm-hmm. How long were you there when you went back? I was there just a little under a year. Okay. Are you still working with that same type of uh, demographic? No, not yet. I hope to do something along those lines mm-hmm. here. Uh, this is not something that just happens in developing nations as far as uh, anytime you have um, migrants who come to a country looking for a better life, mm-hmm. uh, they have human trafficking as part of the perils that they face. Sure. Especially if the country is hard to get into because of immigration laws, it becomes easier and cheaper to get a third party to help them come here. And when you deal with a third party, you many times deal with very unsavory characters. Right. So uh, it does happen. It's here in Syracuse. There's a human trafficking court that's actually in Syracuse that works with uh, people who have been brought here and forced into basically slave-like conditions, Mm -hmm. working conditions. I'd I'd hope that I could eventually work with that group, but it's very different between the two countries. Um, I spent time in a sprawling red light area Mm. uh, that was several blocks. Those are very different from what you see here in that there's there's no central location. I was able to be in the, the homes and the community and to get to know the women there and their children and to see uh, a lot of generational poverty and to understand mm-hmm. the circumstances that, that bring people to this. That can get pretty heavy pretty quick, I bet. It's very intense. Good for you, though, for making those connections and uh, allowing yourself to be moved enough to to want to continue to do that work because I I think it could be really easy for somebody to go and experience something like that and be like okay I've done my work you know I've experienced it and I and I can move on and be happy but so what are you doing then if you're if you're still looking to do that what are you doing what you said covered what I'm doing now, which is cool. um, I'm, I'm recuperating because it was <laughs> it was really it was very emotional for me. Mm-hmm. So I'm trying to write about it and oh, to process. Wow. Eventually, like I said, I'd want to return to that work. So I'm hoping mm-hmm. to get a master's and, you know, do some nonprofit, uh, do some more research in those communities. But I, I needed to recover yeah. a bit and to spend time here at home with my family mm-hmm. and to get used to winter again. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I bet. Yeah. So. I bet. Okay, so how long ago was that then? That you, July. It was just this past just July past that July. you came back. So when we saw you at our music and arts festival. Yes. I had just come back. You were just like, so, yeah, yeah, you were just, you were fresh off the boat there. Yeah. Wow. And it was great to be in upstate New York on a farm. I was very happy. Good. <laughs> With some good people. So now you are, you're writing mm-hmm. and you are, processing this stuff are Mm -hmm. you are you writing in a way that is more for your own processing or are you writing in a way that's for your processing and you hope to eventually be educational or informative for other people both yeah it starts out in very much your own notes and feelings and because you know it's emotional yeah so and um i I write poetry and I teach poetry. That's what I did when I was there. I worked with creative arts as therapy. Mm -hmm. So, of course, it's my own therapy. Why wouldn't it be for me to express first artistically how I feel and how I felt? And then eventually I'd I'd like to create something that could be useful and also to combine it with um, comparison work. Mm -hmm. So if I do work with the community here in the U.S., I could look at the differences between NGOs and how they help people and how rehabilitation works um, in different countries. It's definitely something that happens to happen. I think anyone who works with these groups and these communities where there's a lot of trauma and a lot of emotion that you have Mm -hmm. to worry about you or else how can you be helpful to anybody else? That's right. Really glad that you've been on the porch. Thank you so much. Thank you, Matthew. Yeah, absolutely. That was Julie Schofield, and one of my big goals is to have uh, Julie and people like her back on the show so that we can uh, continue to help people be informed and and know about things that are happening in the world. It's pretty special, folks. And as it happens, as we talk about people traveling the world and journeying and being on adventures, what better 
topic to introduce and to and to coincide with with travel and journey and adventure and wonderful things other than tonight's sponsor of on the porch radio hour which is cheese not one person can pinpoint the person group or the exact year that brought us the first cheese it is, however, agreed upon that milk was poured into the removed stomach of a sheep or similar animal. As the milk was carried, it was shaken, combining this movement with the warm sun and the rennet lining of the stomach made the milk separate into Miss Muffet's favorite treat, curds and whey. The whey satisfying the carrier's thirst, the curds satisfying their hunger. Perfect. And so for the last 4,000 years, cheese has been satisfying everyone that consumes it. The solid dairy wonder that is cheese has been available at tables everywhere, and the makers of cheese would love to be on your table. What a wonderful spread that would be. Speaking of spreads, cheeses come in a spectrum of softness from soft spreadable cheeses to extra hard cheeses we make it all <laughs> if you were to ask cheese what it would like to be when it ages cheese would say on your burger in your omelet with your pie on your road trip <laughs> cheese wants to be everywhere you are you can see that although cheese has been known to stand alone, it likes to climb in with other foods. <laughs> Give in to the big cheese. Let it be right. Let it be dinner tonight. <laughs> Everybody gather around for a picture and say, Cheese! You're listening to On the Porch Radio Hour. We'll be back in a moment. This is what's happening in central New York. The Oswego Music Hall welcomes Joe Crookston to the national stage tonight at 7.30 p.m. and the Ruddy Well Band with John McConnell opening on January 23rd. The Music Hall also hosts The Hook with local performers Nick Piccinini, Tim Burns, and Mark Wall on Friday, January 15th and an open mic on Friday, January 22nd. Visit oswegomusichall.org for more information. The CNY Playhouse production of Move Over Mrs. Markham runs through January 23rd. Visit cnyplayhouse.com for more information. The Colette Theater and Conference Center is hosting an evening with Grammy Award-winning songwriter Mark Cohn on Friday, March 18th, as well as upcoming screenings of Pan and Hotel Transylvania II. To find out about these and other events at the theater or to purchase tickets, visit colettetheater.com or call 315-298-0007. Fulton Community Theater presents The Mating Game from February 5th through the 14th at Tavern on the Lock. Visit fultoncommunitytheater.org or call 315-592-2661 for more information. Lakeside Artisans in Oswego offers a paint night on January 11th, February 8th, and March 14th at 7 p.m. For more information, call 315-342-8880. The CNY Arts Center presents A Night at the Tonys as part of the 2016 Dessert Theater Series. The first event will be held February 13th. The Arts Center is also currently hosting an exhibit by painter Linda Flynn. For more information about these as well as other projects and events at the Arts Center, visit cnyartscenter.com. The Woodenapple Farmstead hosts the fourth annual Hot Cocoa Contest tomorrow at 1 p.m. The winner will receive a t-shirt and the honor of having your cocoa recipe served at all Wooden Apple events in 2016. Wooden Apple Farmstead is also the home of Red Room Sessions, a time for songwriters, musicians, and anyone else who wants to build their musical skill and knowledge to get together. We share songs we are working on, bounce musical ideas off each other, and we usually have time to just play a little music. This is a supportive environment where all levels of songwriting and musical experience are welcome. The next session is January 31st at 6 p.m. For more information about the Red Room Sessions, the Hot Cocoa Contest, or other events and projects, visit Woodenapple Farmstead on Facebook or call 
591-0711. So coming to us all the way from all sorts of parts of the world, like yeah. Arizona yeah. and Washington State and Japan, yeah. is Kay Miracle. Thanks for being on the show, Kay. Thank you. Oh, so that's, that's kind of uh, your journey, right? I mean, you just went from Arizona to Washington to Japan. No. <laughs> oh, okay. Okay. So what was what was your journey then? I grew up in Arizona on my father's side, which is Native American on a reservation. My mother's Scandinavian from Seattle and couldn't take the heat. So we <laughs> moved to uh, Washington State and um, I had to spend my summers, the hottest part of the year, down in Arizona because it was very important that I absorb the culture. So I did that many, many years while my grandparents were alive. And then um, lived in Seattle, went to college for two years and uh, creative writing and uh, commercial art, decided it wasn't for me and ended up uh, getting hired by the USO tour to go overseas and play all the military bases. So I traveled the world doing USO tours in uh, Japan, Korea, Singapore, Thailand, Guam. And then they would send us to Alaska and then Hawaii. So we did this circuit and then Spain, Greece and came back. So did a lot of traveling and... um, uh, while I was in Japan, I met a Syracuse band, and they needed a female singer, guitar player, writer. Joined them thinking I was going to New York City. Right. Got off the plane in Hancock, <laughs> totally freaked out. <laughs> <laughs> of course, they freaked out seeing me, because in those days, I had a mohawk and, you know, wearing leathers and yeah. thought I was in the Big Apple, but no. So I um, joined a great <laughs> band, though, and we went back to Japan overseas and got our chops together and everything and ended up staying. In the USO, you were were you traveling during any kind of conflict or wartime? Uh, yes, it was right when the Philippines. I was in the Philippines for quite a while and had a really horrible experience there that was quite scary. It was it was a strange thing because I had a premonition that something was going to happen and took my passport, my money, and everything and stuck it in a drum case mm. and put it in the equipment wagon to get to the uh, to the plane. And while our bus was on the way following the equipment truck we got stopped by guys with machine guns and they robbed everybody on the bus except for me so yeah. i end up safe and i have no idea why that happened but it was a pretty scary moment I, it was uh, it was life changing it right. was good but you do as an american if you haven't traveled to some of these third world countries you don't realize what you have you know what you take for granted mm-hmm. so it was like it was very enlightening for me and i it, it changed me yeah, so sure. So I'm a different person because of it. And so I am grateful for the bad times as well as the good because mm-hmm. it opened my eyes to some things. And and so you toured with the that band for a while, and then you played with another band. Is that correct? Um, when I came here, then I uh, formed a band called Reckless Driving. We call it Power Twang. We did uh, yeah. Country with Rock and Roll Ed. In that band, um, we end up winning five Sammys locally. Nice. So I got two as a vocalist and um, three, the band won. So nice. that was quite an honor. And st- end up going to um, the uh, South by Southwest Music Con- Conference mm-hmm. in uh, Austin and then also the North by Northeast in Toronto. Nice. So I got to rub elbows with some great people and realize I had a lot of work to do. <laughs> 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 but it was a great experience. Cool. And then and then at one point you were like, you know, I gotta, I've just got to write, right? Like I've got to focus on my writing. And Well, I have over 200 songs. I write all the time. Holy I mean, I have some unfinished things, but I have 200 completed songs at least. Mm-hmm. And um, and it's, I've been writing since I was 12 years old. But unfortunately, part of the band experience here, I was uh, married to someone that um, thought that, you know, writing wasn't important and original material wasn't important. And it really kind of broke my heart. So I end up taking off from that uh, band and actually forming something on my own, doing all original stuff. So the band I'm in now also performs solo is Kane the Miracle Cure, because my last name is Miracle, and um, I perform all original stuff. I mean, all night long, we probably have about four covers, that's it. So yeah. I'm very proud of that. And and so in your bio that you sent, you talked about the band uh, Kane and the Miracle, Miracle Cure, and uh, you talked about it being kind of like a medicine show kind of feel. Explain that a little bit. Well, I had a vision. I, I really like the steampunk look. I like uh, mm-hmm. I like the Victorian look, and then you mix it up a little bit more, um, almost like the Wild West, mm-hmm. you know, kind of like get that crossover. I had a vision of when you're playing your songs, you're storytelling, and you're actually selling something, or you're sending a message, and it's almost like an outdoor gospel review, you know? Yeah. And so when I do my act, I don't like to just look like a band. I We have, like, um, drums made out of suitcases, and we um, have the old tripod lighting fixtures and Mm -hmm. we wear the hats and the outfits and it's just something to take traditional 
and then maybe upgrade it a little bit so it's more contemporary and it matches my writing skill. And then uh, my boyfriend, Charlie, he's building me a gypsy caravan. Attaboy. I mean, it's absolutely gorgeous with a little stage on the back. So we plan on hitting the road a little bit. We're going to Texas in March. I don't know if it'll be ready by then, but we're definitely going to do a little bit of touring with it. It'll be very cool. Nice. All right. I have a couple of questions. One is sort of music related, I think. Oh, okay. And then the <laughs> other one, it may be, but I don't know yet. It, it, can you give us give us one minute of an explanation of Grandpa Claude? Grandpa yeah. Claude. He was he was uh, probably the biggest influence and a true mentor. Um, I had a disinterested father, and it was my mother's father, um, Claude Wood, and he played with Hank Williams. I mean, the Hank Williams. He played stand up bass. Mm-hmm. He played for Doris Day. He played clarinet for um, Pete Fountain, and I used to listen to his records. And he bought me a guitar and. Um, I would sing with him at all these senior gatherings at ballrooms, and I would sing, you know, the old standards like, you know, Blue Skies and Sentimental Journey and mm-hmm. all that stuff. And um, and he really uh, believed in me. Yeah. And I get choked up a little bit because um, I wish he could see me now. I think he'd be very proud. Mm-hmm. And um, he's the one that said, no matter what, <laughs> and, and he lived through the Depression times, and he played music the whole time, he said, no matter what. When things go bad or things go good, people are always going to turn to music and beer. And I was like, okay. That's right. (laughs) I'm in. (laughs) That's right. It's so true. Yeah, I'm glad I asked that. That's those are good wise words. Yeah. And did did I read correctly that when you originally went to college, you went you had a music scholarship and an athletic scholarship? Mm -hmm. Is that right? I was a killer volleyball and basketball player. Boom. Not so much anymore, but yeah, I was one of those um People that uh, love to play sports and also love music and all the teachers would scratch their heads. Are you a jock? Are you a musician? We don't know what to do with you. And right. also did drama. I was, mm-hmm. a, I was in drama, quite a few musicals and things like that. But um, when I got to college, uh, the music was more important to me. Um, it, the, the sports, it was a job. It turned into something not real fun. Right. You know, it was kind of like you get this many points, you lose your scholarship. You know, real pressure didn't nurture you. So... After two years, I just decided to pursue music. Thank you so much, oh, Kay, thank for you. being on the show and coming to hang out. And uh, thank Grandpa Claude, too. I will. Thank All you. All right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Kay Miracle. All her life she worked hard Trying to make the loose ends meet Now her stomach's tied in knots And she can't get to sleep And there's never enough time Between her work and family And as the voice in her head Screaming, what about me? What about me? Is it supposed to be the American dream? Getting deeper in debt until it buries me. Pressure's got us falling apart at the seams. That's the price for the home of the free. And to live in the American dream. She thinks she'll go back to school Maybe finish her degree Her husband tells her it's okay Just don't get too busy You know we need your second job You know you can't afford to quit And who will watch the kids Cause I don't babysit Best you forget about it Is it supposed to be the American dream? Getting deeper in debt until it buries me The pressure's got us falling apart at the seams That's the price for the home of the free And to live in the American dream
Looking back through all the years, her life has been one big compromise. Every time someone takes a piece of her, a part of her spirit dies. She says it's supposed to be the American dream, getting deeper in debt until it buries me. The pressure's got us falling apart at the seams. That's a price for the home of the free. And to live in the American is it supposed to be the American dream. Getting deeper in debt until it buries me. The pressure's got us falling apart at the seams. That's a price for the home of the free. And to live in the American dream. Thank you. Hey, Kay. <laughs> yes. Is it all right if Gina plays with you? Yes, that would be awesome. Hey, let's do that. Where's Gina? <laughs> Gina, come on up here. Let me set up your microphone. <laughs> there you go. Try that. Let's hear it from Gina and Kay, everybody. against the rain An old man growing tired getting used to the pain I'm a wildflower in the garden tended every day Good blow, oh, oh, right through this town. If I don't ever let you down, I'm a wildflower by the street.
Hey, Gina. Yeah. <laughs> Stick around, would you? You bet. All right, you want to sing some more? I'd love to. Do it. Gina Holsapo. April 14th, 2003, Jenny Wayward was walking down a path between trailer homes and mailboxes. And she was looking at all the flowers poking up through the soil and buds on trees. There were still lines of snow along driveways where plows and snowblowers had 
had left larger piles of snow that hadn't melted yet. She started thinking about the re-entry of the natural world and how it sleeps and hibernates and almost goes to a whole other place. And then the spring, how it starts to come back. She stopped and caught herself off guard because she had consciously thought of the word re-entry. And it took her back to the work that she had done when she was finishing her master's and taking on her Ph.D. and how it was all about working with inmates in prisons drug users, drug dealers, gang members that were all released from prison and made their re-entry back into society, back into their communities. She thought about how important that work was to her and how symbolic it was that she was thinking about flowers, plants and buds on trees and making that connection to people leaving prisons and re-entering into the community. She thought about her father and how she remembered that her freshman year of college was when he made his first re-entry back into the community. She smiled at the thought of it being his first re-entry and how over the course of just a few years he was able to slowly make those steps into staying successfully in the community but it took several attempts he's a wise man one of those stories where he ended up in the wrong place with the wrong people and every time he always told people that exact sentence he always ended with at the right time he never said it was the wrong time it was always the right time he would have ended up in a much worse situation, he always said, if if he hadn't been put in prison then. Growing up in the community that he did, being from Tonka Hogan and not knowing where you belong, being from a place where alcohol is a big part of your life, he was thankful that he had grown up with the community of young men that he did and he was thankful that he ended up in prison when he did. And he was thankful that he had a daughter that didn't follow his path and he was thankful that he was able to make his way back into community and that he was welcomed back into his own town. Being a gang member was difficult on the outside but on the inside of prison it was even worse because when you get to go out and have your recreation time, when it's time for you to try to relax, even though you're surrounded by really tall cement walls with razor wire and men with guns, you can still see the sky. You can see birds. And if you listen closely, he always said if you listened close, you could hear those birds. You could hear them over the shuffling of stones and the bouncing of basketballs and men doing what he called puffing, just talking back and forth, talking trash, and trying to one-up each other. There were days, though, that going out into the wreck yard was a bad move because there were other gang members there from his own gang and from other gangs, and he said sometimes it was even worse to reconnect with his fellow gang members because they wanted to talk about the things they were going to do when they got on the outside and it wasn't the same stuff that he wanted to do that was not re-entry he saw himself as a flower poking through breaking that barrier between prison and the community Jenny smiled, picked a flower, way too soon. It was really 
very much too early to be picking a flower. But it was beautiful. Almost open. But not. Almost to its full color. But not. She thought, this is where I am in my life. I'm almost, almost there. Almost have my PhD. I can almost start working with men and women that are being released from prison. This was her goal. She wanted to be able to work with men and women, and she wanted to start her own business. She wanted to employ her father as an advocate for men and women that were being brought back into the community. And she wanted to lower the recidivism rate, and she wanted to do those things, and she wanted to do them with her father. And as she looked up and realized that she could see the whole sky and she could see the birds, and she didn't have to listen that closely to hear them, and she wasn't surrounded by walls of any kind, and she listened to those birds. She slowly turned around And her father came walking down that same path. His hands in his pockets. Shuffling through the stones of the driveway very much as she always envisioned him shuffling through the stones in the wreck yard. The way he described. He too bent down and picked an almost open, almost to its full color flower. And their eyes met. And as they saluted each other by raising their flower, like raising a glass, holding them very gently by their stems as to not bend or break or disturb them any more than they already have, the rest of the world knew what was happening and all of the birds landed on their branches and they stopped singing and the wind stopped blowing and even the stones that Jenny's father was kicking as he walked landed in soft dirt and grass so as to not make any more noise and Jenny had the feeling that even miles and miles and miles away in the prison that her father had been recently let out of. They too were in the wreck yard standing listening together as Jenny and her dad sang the song of their town. This is my home this is my only home. This is the only sacred ground that I have ever known. And should I stray in the dark night alone, rock me, goddess, in the gentle arms of Eden. Rock me, goddess, in the gentle arms of Eden. Once again, for the 44th time, you've made it to the end of a wonderful On the Porch Radio Hour episode. Don't be sad. There's more. Well, as a matter of fact, Next week, we're going to have musician John Sampson, and we're going to have the Fulton Community Theater's Michael Bolio and his cast of The Mating Game. But wait, there's more. On February 6th, mark your calendars. Not because I want you to go out and enjoy something in the community at uh, Warm Up Oswego. I do want that. But more importantly, I want you to go to Warm Up Oswego because On the Porch Radio Hour is going to be there recording live. 
yeah, I'm pretty pumped about this. And then again, we'll be off the farm. On March 10th, almost one month later, we get out once a month and we're glad that we can do that with On the Porch Radio Hour. So on March 10th, mark your calendars to show up at the CNY Arts Center where we will be recording live as well. I want to thank Kay Miracle and Julie Schofield for being on the show today. I want to thank everybody for listening on Concert Window. I want to thank everybody for going to www.ontheporch.weebly.com and listening to all of our shows. And I want to thank everybody that came to the farm today. You're the best. And until we see you again, peace to your journey. On the Porch is a production of the Wooden Apple Farmstead with host and writer Matthew Wood. Our musical director is Gina Holsopple. Our stage manager is Ray Monet. Our sound technician is Maxwell Wood. This week's show is recorded live at Wooden Apple Farmstead in Palermo, New York. This week's guests are K Miracle and Julie Schofield. Find information about past shows, being on the porch, and much more online at ontheporch.weebly.com.